You can't make a Hollywood blockbuster without the Foley team. They create the performance-oriented sound elements of both live action and animated films, with over 850 credits between them, including Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Doctor Strange, Finding Dory, Moana, Avengers Infinity War, Black Panther, and Dunkirk, Skywalker Sound's Foley team artists John Rush and Shelley Roden and mixer Scott Curtis are some of the world's leading producers of this cinematic craft. So what is Foley? Can you explain Foley to me? Good question. Mm -hmm. Jack Foley came up with the idea many, many years ago. Uh, this is when um, talking pictures were coming into play and all sound effects were cut. That was very, very, very labor intensive, time consuming. So he came up with the idea to perform them, if you will, uh, because it was a time saving thing and also in creating a performance, there would be more life. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so we perform in sync with picture. Mm -hmm. live. So if AO was walking down a hallway, we would say, okay, ready, Scott? She would roll, and then her first footstep will be planted, and I'll just watch her become her and move as I need to to give Scott the sound he needs. Yeah. We've got uh, microphones in the ceiling, mm -hmm. plus we have the closer mic that's, clo that's aimed more at her feet, for instance. Mm -hmm. And so I'll do a blend between that room mic and the close mic and put the character in space, so as they're coming closer to camera, I'll start to favor the close mic mm. versus the room mic. Oh, that makes a lot and of sense. And so then you get that sense of, of movement. Hey, you guys, can you give me, give me a little level? Okay, watch your ears. We won't do that either. Huh? Front. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> Okay, Scott, we're ready when you are, sir. All right, here we go. Okay. Uh, typically, when we take on a project, we'd like to, as much as possible, see the film beforehand. Of course, once we've seen and talked about it, when we come in in the morning, we'll typically look at the first reel and then Scott will generate the cue sheets that I think of roadmap. You know, what are we going to be doing? Here's a character here, here's a character there, here are the props. And it's our minds slash ears together going, ah, that's right. So that kind of plays into my next question, which is how do you know which prop to use to create a desired effect? There's you know, kind of a reference in our mind of things we've used in the past. Mm -hmm. But even that, though, is like there was a moment recently on a film where Scott said, you know, this isn't quite working. What about that thing in the back room that makes that really weird sound? Like we go, ah, that's it. So again, it's, it's the, what's wonderful is a collaborative effort, you know, amongst all of us having been in the business for so many years. That's part of the collaboration is that between the performance and the capturing of such and whatever manipulation I need to do on my side, it's the, that culmination is what the end product ends up becoming. Yeah. Another example of that is in Finding Dory with Hank's body movement. Um, we had to do Hank on many different surfaces. He was climbing into a transport tank and then he was on cement. And so maybe what I would use to create his body would sound a little slappier on the cement. So I had to be careful with manipulating that in front of the microphone or I had to put the mic off axis so you wouldn't hear that attack of the slap. So we just have to think for every circumstance, what do we want to capture for each moment? Mm -hmm. And it could be the same tool, but you have to manipulate it differently. Yeah, and, well, certainly on, on Finding Dory, uh, there's a character, Becky. There's a typical wing flap we would do, but Becky, of course, needed to sound a little different. When we look at something on screen, that kind of tells us, at least for me, I'm an odd aisle. In other words, when I look at something on screen, I'll hear the sound in my mind. So then I go, hmm, well, how, how do I re actually make that with my hands or whatever to you know get that sound that I heard in my mind to physically create that and of course then have Scott do his thing to it. So how do you convey like emotion like someone's demeanor or like the way that they, they walk if they're angry or if they're really joyful and you know buoyant? You know, when, when we're asked a question you know how do you give it life? Mm -hmm. It's emotion and to that end if a character is um, standing up in a courtroom and going to walk over and really prove the accused is guilty I or Shelley, depending on who's doing that character, would do it in a certain way to hopefully push the storyline forward. In other words, create a believability.
from an emotional standpoint. You kind of have to step into the role. Right. Yes. It has to be, the performance has to be appropriate to what's in the scene. If, for instance, in John's example, he's about to prove his point. Mm -hmm. So he, his footsteps have to sound confident. The other thing our job is, is to help augment and, and support the story that's being told. And Scott says something very uh, important from his standpoint. In other words, maybe the original production, what was originally you know, shot quiet on the set, the person's shuffling for whatever reason. Maybe the shoe, or who knows. And if I hear that, I'm not quite sure what to do. I might do something, but Scott will say, hey, let's give it a little more gravitas or whatever. And so again, his role cannot be uh, emphasized enough you know, to help bring it all together. Yeah, for example, um, we had to do Moana and Maui, and Maui's this gigantic man, and so Scott really helped on his end to make us sound gigantic, mm -hmm. in contrast to Moana, who's very light. <laughs> so what are some of the most memorable sounds you've created as a team? On Doctor Strange, in the library, for the bookcase, and that was really, I thought, quite difficult and quite well done. Thanks, Scott. One. Yeah. And we also had to come up with a jacket, but it's made of metal and it comes off the wall in parts. So it was like, ding, 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 ding. John and I actually performed that together because we could do different notes, like we were an orchestra, and like he handled the, the low, heavy metal part of it, and I was just like the, the Accent. little accents. Thank right. you, Scott. Yeah. Right. And of course, in Finding Dory 2, uh, we have a very large water tank here, in fact, a, a series of them. Uh, one is about 450 gallons, and we can actually work in there where we actually have the sound of the ocean. Most Foley stages, if they have water, it's uh, against the wall because it's the easiest place to gain access to plumbing. But that creates a host of issues sonically. Um, and if it's a tank, it's usually not that big. Whereas here, like I say, you can uh, you know, have Shamu with the junior in there. You mentioned something about a typical day. And I wanted to mention a component which is not necessarily, or maybe it is seen easily, but I want to make sure it's, it's, it's exposed. Mm -hmm. And that is the, uh, the really wonderful um, camaraderie I have with Scott and Shelley as far as all our opinions matter. There's no ego per se. You know, I mean, you know, we all have one, but it's not sure. to, to the point where it's a detriment of the project or what's happening. It's really important for us, if I may say, and then certainly anybody out there contemplating getting into this or any field, that the people you work with, you honor them, you know, and you, you respect them and let them help you. That is the most important thing, probably, yeah, especially absolutely. in this environment. Very much so. Yeah. It's got to be collaborative. Yeah.